Hello and welcome to another video. And today, I'm going to be looking to get rid of some of the orange peel from the Subaru Impreza that I inflicted when I done my DIY paint job. Let's go do it. Orange peel. What is it and how do we get rid of it? Essentially, anybody that tries to do a DIY home repair on their car and use a rattle can paint, spray painting, or try and paint your car yourself with a spray gun, if you don't know exactly what you're doing, there's a 99.9% .9 chance you're probably going to end up with some orange peel. This is what it looks like. So, if you look at the paint here, you can see that it's kind of the reflection is quite textured. It's not a glass-like reflection. Now, I'm not a spray painter. I'm not a panel beater. So, I can't go into depth about what is the exact cause of orange peel, but something to do with not enough pressure in your gun and holding it too far away from the finish is what I'm led to believe is one of the main causes for it happening. However, what I do know is how to get rid of it. And here's what we're going to do. So the equipment that we've got today, I've got a boot jam so as I can have the boot a bit open. I've got a sander. I've got various different grades of sanding discs. And then I've got a few different polishes so that we can bring that flat sanded look back to life. I have to say, the orange peel in this car is nowhere near as bad as what I've seen on some cars that I've, I've walked past. Say you've um, been in an accident and your car's been off to a repair shop and they've not really given to monkeys about it, busted it out and then fired it out the door, no, no sanding, no polishing, then your paint can look pretty crap, even though your car's fixed, technically, the paint still doesn't look as good as it once did, and this is going to be my car, I'm going to use this, so I want it looking pristine by the time I'm finished with it. I've also got a few wee dust nibs that I need to get out of there, so let's see how we get on. I'll mask the, board, uh, the boot up. I'll do a 50-50, I'll do half of the boot and then we can do a bit of a comparison and see if we've made much of an improvement. So let's get to it. So just while I'm preparing, I picked up this handy little tool from KDN Detailing. I think it cost me £15 and what it does is it kind of jams your boot open, which is great for me because it really helped save my back throughout this process. What it does is it clicks into the latch that's attached to the car and then clicks into the boot latch propping it up and keeping it nice and sturdy and what you'll see is that it allowed me to stand up without having to bend over too much when it came to doing the work. Now it is important to note, you're going to see me going straight into the sanding. I've already prepared the boot so I've already cleaned it and I've already clay barred it. All the contamination should be gone and ready to go. Just bear that in mind if you're going to do that yourself, you need to thoroughly clean and prepare the area before you start cracking on with the sanding. So my process is going to be starting off with a 1500 grit sandpaper. I'll make a first pass and then wipe it off and see how I'm looking with the orange peel. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like after you've done a pass. As you can see there, there is still some shiny spots there. We want it to be looking really matte. I mean there's some really wet spots there. However, uh, we want it to be looking completely matte, which means that the panel would be completely flat before we start going in. To do any polishing. So moving on to the second pass and knowing that I've still got quite a lot of orange peel to knock down, I'll take a bit more time doing this before assessing it again. Alright so now you can see there's very little, after two passes, you get very little orange peel left there. I know round, round here is a different story, I don't want to get too close to that. Um, I'm not used to doing this so much so I'm trying to take my time and be very cautious. If there's a little left round about here, then um, it's not the end of the world. Whereas compared to that side, shiny, but terrible reflection. Flat, no reflection. So off camera, I've done a third pass at the 1500 grit, and then what you're seeing just now is the first pass at 2000 grit. The whole point in moving up the grades of sandpaper is to every time you move up, you knock out the previous sandpaper's sanding marks. So I'm now going to start moving up the grits. I don't want to go too much just because I'm a bit nervous about doing this to a freshly painted panel. But don't, worry, don't, don't get me wrong, if I really wanted to I could repaint if I had to. But I'd prefer not to and I'd rather get this right on the first go. But that's after the 2000 grit. You can still see there is a few areas that's not perfect but it'll be a hell of a lot better than what's on this side. Another go with the 2000. 
and then I'll do a 3000 and then I can start polishing. So as we move on to the second pass at 2000 grit, I'm not going to stop and have a look between sections this time, I'm just going to wash it off and then I'm going to go straight back in with 3000 grit again for two passes and then we can have a look and see how flat and how good we're looking before starting to polish. Now then, after hitting it with the 2000 and then the 3000, the panel is looking probably about as flat as what I would be able to get it compared to shiny side, flat side. Next phase is going to be to start polishing that back up to get a bit of a shine again. Going to be starting off with some absolute valentine uppercut, which is a heavy compound. Going to use that with a microfiber pad. Now, a lot of people will probably be flapping about here thinking, you've just used 1500 grit three times, 2000 grit twice, 3000 grit twice, and I've not burnt through the paint yet. I've not taken a paint depth gauge because, well, for starters, mine's is broken, I need to get a new one. But secondly, this car has got multiple layers of paint on it. It's going to give me an overall thickness for the original green colour that was a boot, then the primer that I put on, then the base, then the lacquer. It's going to be very difficult to tell how much lacquer is actually there in the first place. I just know that by, because I painted it, that I put on a ton of lacquer, so there should be enough there to see me through this. If there's not, I'll end up burning through, making an arse of it and having to do it all again. Hopefully that doesn't happen. For the first pass, I'm using Absolute Valentin Upper Cut, which is their heavy cut compound, paired up with my microfiber cutting pad. Just as I'm starting to apply the polish to the boot, you can see just how well the, the stay that I'm using is holding up. It's keeping the boot lid in a really nice position. Personally for me, because it allows me to stand up with a nice straight back and start polishing without having to sit down and bend over. It also means I can get right up to the edges without worrying about catching the bumper. Now like all the processes I've followed already, I'll do the first pass, I'll get that off and then I'll assess how it's looking before going on to the next pass. So after one pass with a heavy cut, you can see it's starting to come back. Give it another pass and then we'll try and finesse it. And again, I've done the second pass off camera, the main reason being I don't want to bore you all with me watching me do multiple passes using the same compound. So we're now on to what is the Cartec, which is their medium compound, it's the, the orange bottle and we're using this with the orange uh, chemical guys honeycomb pad. To start refining any of those microfiber marks that are left and bringing the shine back to the panel. Hey guys, so I've just done what would be the first pass of the medium compound. This is the orange peel side and the sanded side. Don't know how well that's coming across in camera, but to the eye it looks awesome. I'm going to do another pass with the medium compound and then do a finishing compound and then we'll get the tape off and have a look. Time to finesse. After doing that second pass with the medium cut compound, I was really happy with how it was coming up. So like I've just said, time to finesse it up and use our finishing compound to get the panel looking as good as I can possibly get it. I do realise that I've put way too much polish on the pad, sometimes I forget that I'm doing a small area and I mean that could have done the whole boot lid there but this is how we're now looking after one pass of the finishing polish. Just using a little bit of the Garage Therapy panel wipe to get rid of any polish, polish residue and then we can go in for a final look. Moment of truth. See how we're looking. You can see all the kind of textured reflection here. And then if we step over to the side that we sanded and polish back to life. Oh, so much more crisp. We'll take the line off and we'll see anything. Try and stand right in the middle to get a true 50-50. Nice and crisp. Nice and bumpy. Crisp. Bumpy. Got to say, just looking at that, I am really, really happy with how it's turned out. 
for not a lot of work, that's probably taken me about an hour's worth of time to do that back quadrant there. So yes, in all, there's going to be a lot of work when it comes to doing the full car. And my sander's a six inch sander, so I'm probably going to need to get something, get a wee three inch one or something to get all these wee contours and stuff like that. But really pleased with how that's turned out. And I hope it's given you the confidence that if you've got some really bad orange peel, that you can go out and get it sorted yourself if you feel confident in doing it. This is by no means a guide. This is my process. I'm not a professionally trained detailer. I'm not a professionally trained spray painter. Spray painter. This is just my process. This is the way I've always done it. And it's the way I'll continue to do it. So, I hope you liked the video. hope it's been somewhat informative to you. Please do us a favour, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, get the video out there, get it into the algorithm, and as always, I will see you on the next one.